You're listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy. Learn about how gratitude turns what you have into enough through stories of motivation and inspiration. Wherever you are in your life and whatever you're going through, That Gratitude Guy is here to help you achieve great things and live a happier, healthier life. Change the way you live today right here with David George Brooke. That Gratitude Guy, starting now. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to That Gratitude Guy podcast. I am David George Brooke, your host, where my mission is to have guests that relate and recall moments of their lives that were propelled and energized by utilizing the power of a gratitude mindset. You can expect a deeper dive into gratitude's immense power, a gratitude tip of the show, or maybe a gratitude nugget and how you can become a gratitude believer, and maybe one to three takeaways from today's show. My podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk radio network and is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and other places where you get your podcast. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear. Thank you for that. And also to purchase a gratitude journal to, form, uh, to find out more rather about my gratitude speaking, gratitude coaching, group coaching, or one-on-one coaching, you can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com. Dot, dot com, rather. So let me get on with the show and introduce you to my guests. I'm very excited to have my guest today, Dr. Joe Pace. Let me tell you a little background on Joe. Dr. Joe Pace is a nationally recognized performance psychologist, educator, speaker, and author who conducts seminars and workshops in the area of corporate cultural alignment, leadership development, and personal and professional achievement. He uses his background in teaching psychology and business to deliver research-based information to thousands of people from executives to students in the area of mental technology of high performance. Dr. Pace currently serves as the chairman of the board of the Global Education for the Pacific Institute, He is the creator of the Success Strategies for Effective Colleges and Schools programs, which has been implemented worldwide by the Pacific Institute. Additionally, he is an author of four textbooks on professional development published by McGraw-Hill, designed for individuals about to enter the workplace. He serves as an educational and psychological consultant for various companies, colleges, and schools throughout the United States and Canada. And let me tell you, listeners, I could go on quite a bit longer and tell you a lot more, but I'll, I'll get to my guests immediately and get it live. So, Dr. Joe Pace, welcome to the show. Thanks, David. I appreciate the opportunity. You bet. You bet. So I always kind of start out with, I like kind of the context. Tell the listeners how you and I met. Yeah, you and I met um, in Seattle uh, probably sep- probably about eight or nine years ago. Yes. Uh, and, and I think the first time we met, you were with me in the audience um, at the Pacific Institute. Correct. Uh, and I, I believe Lou Tice was presenting, um, mm-hmm. if I remember correctly. Anyway, uh, and he's the founder of, of the Pacific Institute. And he passed, you know, a few years ago, but um, that's when uh, I first met you. And then I've been following you. Uh, I happen to live in South Florida. So, you know, South Florida and Seattle are about the two furthest distance. Right. You know, and um, of course, I haven't done with with the pandemic and everything. I haven't traveled as much anymore, but I I listened to David's uh, Monday Morning Minute. Every mm. Monday. And then I read your, um, you have another one that goes out, I believe, on Friday. Right, correct. And, um, it's always, always excellent and well, thank right you. to the point and uh, very practical. And, and there's a lot of scientific uh, background and basis, uh, you know, to uh, what, what David is doing and made it very simple with, the, you know, being grateful and what it, and so I've done research um, over the years too uh, on persistence. Um, keep going. How do you, how do you not quit? And uh, dealing with, um, you know, just all kinds of, of uh, areas, especially now when people are so frustrated still uh, and unhappy, but everything always comes back to, I I mentioned to David earlier that in some of the new research out, uh, (laughs) the number one, it's called the neuroscience of happiness. Okay. And the first thing on here is the most important question to ask when you're down is what am I grateful for? Right. And, and then there's a bunch of things that talks about how the brain works and how what chemicals are released. I mean, people, think, some people find that interesting, but honestly, you know, you, you just I mean, you, 
you, you want to know what time it is, you look at your watch, you don't have to know how it's made. <laughs> so, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, it's Cut interesting, it right Joe, that you mentioned that too, because, and that talks about releasing uh, dopamine and serotonin and the chemicals. And when I do my regular talk, I have kind of the science of gratitude and I get into some of the studies and mm -hmm. Dr. Robert Emmons and Dr. McCullough and some of the things they did on gratitude. And it's really interesting because I feel like I have to defend it sometimes and say, this is not woo woo stuff from yeah. some, uh, you know, hippie commune in the sixties or something, yeah. but there's definitely a science around it. So how was with everything that the Pacific Institute does, uh, Joe, what, how is the gratitude piece kind of woven into the teaching and the education part of, uh, of what you do and now Mark and TPI? Yeah, well, it, it all, it all comes back to that's sort of the button you push um, to get things to happen right away. And, and even those are, there's other things, you know, like uh, write down your negative feelings. Um, there's, um, uh, you know, to make a decision and don't look back. And there's a bunch of things like that. But it all starts out with what are you great? What are you grateful for? So you know, when days I'm had, when I have days that I, I just am not with it, I I stop right there. I've learned to think about what am I grateful for, and you know, of course, it starts with me. It starts with family, uh, all that I've been able to do over my over my life. I've got grandkids, and and you know, right there, you begin the dopamine starts flowing in the brain, yeah. and you automatically feel a surge and then go on you know uh, an interesting thing is that the the brain doesn't know the difference between something vividly imagined and an actual experience right um, right the same neurons and fine motor muscles are are working um whether you're physically doing it or visualizing it and thinking it so just thinking about being grateful and i go on you know my brain goes into vacations we've had this and that and, and so it's almost like I'm on vacation again and oh, I'm, nice. I'm, I'm sitting right here, but it, mm -hmm. it starts with being grateful. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting about the, again, the neuroscience of happiness and writing down the negative thoughts. I did a exercise. I, during the pandemic, I did, I don't know, probably 75 or hundred zoom since March of last year when that happened. And so I was fortunate for zoom that it helped, but I am looking forward to getting back in person. One of the ones I do in terms of Make room for gratitude, clear out your brain is one of the modules. And I pass out these red pieces of paper and then I give people a minute or two to write down all the screw ups they've had in their life. As many negative things they can think of as whatever. And so then I give them a minute or two and whatever. And the reason I tell them at red paper is because the person sitting next to you can't read what's on red paper and you don't want them to read that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so then I would do for a while, I had to come up in the, mar in the death march and go to a shredder and shred them all, you know, cause that's mm -hmm. where they need to be in the trash. And then that's I tried cool. a thing where I would light them on fire in like an ashtray and then the smoke alarm went off and started this piercing sound so i decided that wasn't good so now i have them tear it up into a thousand pieces and whoever gets the most pieces gets a journal or gets a book or something like that so it's really important to acknowledge those feelings but then to get rid of them and if you write them down that's one of the great ways too so so joe talk a little bit more i'm such a fan of what you've done and of course lou and diane and tpi uh, a little bit more about the educational initiatives of TPI now that Mark is running it, but some of the other things, because you mentioned persistence and this new way of learning is pretty interesting to me. Yeah. Um, the, what's going on is uh, I've worked, uh, I've been with the Institute now uh, over 30 years, actually, and I've always worked predominantly with colleges and, and universities. Um, but uh, what's happening now throughout the country is it's like a mental pandemic going on. Mental health is mm -hmm. just deteriorating. And um, I was just reading in some higher ed journals in, in colleges and universities, I'm not even talking about, you know, K through 12, because it's right. there too, that 95% of the students they surveyed uh, have some form of anxiety, mm. have some are sad, um, and, and even little kids because they, they couldn't see their friends. And anyway, so, so and, and it's not only that's the, it's the adults too the teachers uh, the, and, and look at what's going on like on airplanes and uh, people are disrupting everything and they don't know how to deal um, with you know these issues and going back to the one that's uh, you know label negative feelings you, you like David said that's a great thing to do on red paper too but what we found is is it's the searching that counts in other words once you once you've admitted what's bothering you, um, the brain is going click, 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 and trying to find solutions for you. 
Um, but, mm -hmm. but then you, you destroy that because now you're looking for solutions instead. Um, so we started, we, we just created a program that's self-directed and we've never had that. The Institute uh, this July will be ce uh, celebrating 50 years um, in, in working in, in mental health. Um, you know, so we created something that's self-directed and we've gone totally online with all the seminars mm -hmm. and trainings and Excellent. Every, everything we've done. Uh, and they invested a lot of money in doing that, but uh, we're finding it's the same effect. But when a program self-directed, it means you can go through it at your own pace. Mm -hmm. um, and then they've decided instead of actually like in a seminar doing trainings with instructors in the front or a seminar leader, um, that what we've been doing is what we're calling study clubs. And each unit, there's 14 units in this, it's called the Achieving uh, Balance Wellbeing. Um, and, and trying to get balance in your life, achieving balance, well-being. And so what, what the idea is, um, is, is that we're trying to, to help people um, get a hold and get a grip of everything. And so they go through it. And then should they choose several times during the week, there are um, sessions that they can go in led by different group leaders or different participants. So we just had one with 30 people. Mm. Um, and, and so uh, 15 of them actually ran the show, so to speak, because there's not much to it. You watch the video and you discuss it. Wow. And as you know, Dave, once you get started with discussions, it goes every, I mean, it's oh, just, yeah. and everybody loves it because they're all, you know, participating. So Thank you for letting me explain, you know, what that is. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, Joe, you just hit on another thing too, about this uh, 80 or 95% of students and faculty, which we forget about sometimes too, uh, depressed, anxiety, sadness. Is there any from the Dr. Joe Pace perspective? And of course, certainly I'm always going to talk about gratitude and, and specifically gratitude journal. One of the things that says on the front of my journal is if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. So there's something, I am so grateful for Joe, Dr. Joe Pace mm -hmm. being on my podcast. It plants it in the brain. And, right. and for some of us that have a higher digit for our first number of our age know that it's important to keep our brains planted and so forth. But is there anything that would be an antidote to that or, or maybe some ways to combat that depression and anxiety and sadness for this faculty, staff, and all these students and people? Yeah, well, one of the things we teach um, is called the downward spiral. Mm -hmm. And the downward spiral, uh, we don't want to get into a spiral, but I'm, I'm afraid many people are. But there's only three things that put you in a spiral, and they have to be all three at the same time. The first one is when you feel worthless. Now, that's two words, you know, mm -hmm. not worthless, but worth less than you did before, like the year before. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is hostile. You're fed up you're angry. Okay. And the third one, I think is the most important. It's called hopeless. Oh yeah. When all three are happening at the same time, you go into a downward spiral, which begins to affect the brain, uh, not only chemically as well. Um, and, and, and you, people get into bad, you know, bad and deep spirals. However, the antidote, <laughs> so simple you know, sometimes, David, the most profound things are so simple. True. The answer is look for ways to feel worth more rather mm. than worth less. And there's where the gratitude comes in, I believe. You know, uh, look at all you've done in your life. And, well, I lost my job. I haven't worked for a year. Um, you know, the pandemic. Okay. What are you grateful for, though? Because what that does is it causes a shift, a paradigm shift in the thinking of the brain to something positive. Right. Hostile. When people are hostile, uh, what has to happen is they've got to lower the hostility. Uh, we we got to quit being that angry, okay? And and if you're coaching somebody, you, you make them feel worth more, uh, less hostile. But the biggest one is we give them hope. Hope. Hope is it. Because if you don't have hope, that's it. Uh, yeah. So hopeful is so, so it's, it's worth more, less hostile, and hopeful, and thinking in terms of gratitude. What am I grateful for? Exactly. That shifts everything around. Um, and, and just as a side, the, uh, I have here the upward spiral in the mm -hmm. neuroscience. The very first one is grateful. Um, the second one is to label, uh, label negative feelings. 
And it's the searching that counts. In other words, you don't have to fix it yet, but just put it on paper and admit it. Another thing is suppressing emotions does mm. not work. Suppressing, some people just suppress. There's where the blood pressure comes in, uh, the headaches, the strokes. Um, now the last one, there's one last one. It's called make the decision. It says here, uh, brain science shows that making decisions reduces worry, anxiety, and helps you solve problems. It makes the brain feel a sense of control, reduces stress, boosts, boosts, uh, boosts uh, pleasure. And here's the kicker. Any decision is better than no decision at all. Yes. Just make yeah. a decision and don't look back. And if you messed up, it was a lesson. And, and it, it's so simple, um, yet profound, but people don't think to do it. They're, yeah. they're not, you know, they're not, their mindset is more on all the negative than the positive. Well, and I want to go back on this because this is really good. The downward spiral and the upward spiral. And I'll jump back to the downward spiral. First of all, I like it when somebody said simple, that doesn't mean it's easy. You know, I mean, I think there's a big difference. It's, it's, it's very simple, but there does take some effort. I've told people many times, you know, I'll be your training wheels when I'm not going to pedal your bike. You know, you got to do some work. You know, I, I think the good Lord gives you a toolbox, but you got to build the house. You know, so there's some, some responsibility, but feel worthless, hostile, angry, hopeless. And you're absolutely right about hopelessness, because I think that's the one that when somebody has no hope, it's the most dire of circumstances. So, so look for ways to feel more, more worthy if you're worth more and then give them hope. And I think that's one of the things I say about the gratitude journal. Not only are you writing it. And I talk about that. If you think about it, it's like a dream. If you write about it, it, it inspires you. But if you think about it, uh, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. It's so important. It takes five minutes. I've timed, I've timed it a ton of times in the things that you can write down what you're grateful for. And it does help you to focus on what you have, kind of your blessings and your abundance as opposed to your lack. And I think too, so then that moves to the upward spiral. There's gratitude, being grateful, uh, lab label the negative items. And I mentioned that with that red paper exercise. And then what do we want to do with those things? That's just, those could be negative things or they could be the big screw ups, but now we're going to burn them up, chop them up, shred them up, get them out of there. It's the old thing about, you know, you drive your car, the windshield is four feet wide, two feet deep. And the rear view mirror is about two inches by about five inches. Well, which should we pay more attention to is going forward. And the only thing I will caution people, sometimes they drive over something, they pick it up and put it back in front of them again, drive over it again. And I go, no, that's process. That's got to be behind you. So, but on the don't suppress the feelings, I'm assuming that means let those feelings, you know, have their day or their moment or whatever, and not try to, to tamp them down. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And, and, and that's the part where you tell them to write them down um, and even writing them down, like you said, uh, lessens the suppression of it. And what you're talking about is beautiful. Well, we have four senses. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you're, when you're writing it down, okay. Number one is you're seeing it. Number two is you're feeling, I mean, you're writing something. Uh, some people, David say, read them out loud mm -hmm. as you mm -hmm. read them out loud. Now you're using your, your ears. The only thing I don't think we can do is, um, taste it, you know, yeah. Yeah. um, yeah, and 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 so um, or smell it, you know. <laughs> right. But maybe but the, the that's right. But repetition uh, is the mother of learning, mm -hmm. and uh, there's some research out there that says you have to people have to be reminded of things at least eight times or yeah. some more. So the repetitive the repetition is the mother of learning. With keep keep you know their affirmations. What what are you grateful for? Because your mind goes so many places. I think they said something like, we have something like 60,000 thoughts a day. Right. And, um, you know, it's like they're all over the place, you know. And, and, and unless you focus on something like your journal, you know, and, and as soon as you go back, some research says it takes between um, two to five seconds to actually switch your mood. Mm. So, to, so, but you have to be, you know, mindful of it. So right. if you have those being grateful journal in front of you, just look at that. And, and within two to five seconds, your mood begins to change because, you know, you're teleological, you move towards what you think about. Mm -hmm, correct. And, 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 and so the idea is you're better off thinking, you know, about what you're grateful for, think about what your goals are. Um, and then I, I always love your saying at the end, uh, be grateful and never quit. Yeah, thank you. Um, that's persistence, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's, that's a big part of it too. So the formula is all there, you know, you just have to do it. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's uh, such a good point. And I was thinking too, that, um, um, your brain and 60,000 thoughts a, a day, and some people will say more and so on and so yeah. forth. And, but speaking of your brain, I heard this the other day and I thought this was so fantastic. They said, you can go three weeks without food. You can go three days without water. You can go three minutes without oxygen, but you can only go three seconds without the thought in your brain. That's, and that's how that's how fast your brain is computing. Right. You know, oh, right. I'm on this podcast. Am I thinking? Is it, am I coming across well? Do I? Does my shirt look good? I mean, this poor yeah. little brain. I, yeah. I liken it to somebody driving a car with a gas pedal, depressed the whole time. It that's never right. has a break. That's it. So, self talk. That's self talk. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, that, and we beat ourselves up without even knowing we're doing it. You oh, know, boy, is that true? That's true. <laughs> and I think the point you made about decisions, I really like as well. Oh, and and before I come to that, this uh, the four senses, the writing down. I put seeing it, feeling it, and then even touching it. Maybe the pen yeah. and hearing the right. ink or go on the paper too is even that. Right. And so back to that writing thing. But I yeah. think that's such a good point about the making decisions because I remember taking a course from a professor at the U of W back in the late seventies or whenever I was there. And he said, you know, be decisive. It's one of the most impressive characteristics you can have. Be decisive. Now, if you make a good decision, that's great. If you make a bad decision, you know what you do? You just make another decision. <laughs> change things. Right. And I thought that was, I thought it was so cool. And so, yeah. but, but I think the, and, and any more thoughts on the don't suppress the feelings ways to have people that stuff it and, oh, I'm really great. They're laughing on the outside, crying on the inside. Any other tips around that? Yeah, I, I think a couple of things. One, one, before I forget was um, um, when you're writing down in your journal, it's like creating a blueprint. I mean, could you imagine mm -hmm. somebody building a house and they, they don't have a plan? Or, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to put a brick here and I'm going to put it over there. So, so the idea of writing things down, including your goals, uh, gives you a blueprint that you can change or modify or whatever. Uh, right. As far as suppressing feelings, it's interesting because there's some research, you know, some people just, they say, just go to a punching bag and punch it, you right. know, and what that does is, is, it, is it causes the cortisone and, you know, the, 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 the same negative things you don't want to happen, <laughs> you right, know, right. Rele releasing the chemicals. Right. Um, but to, to shift your thinking um, is number one. I think another thing is to talk to people, you know, uh, people, they suppress because they're, they're, they're either uh, ashamed or too embarrassed to talk, but talking it, talking it out. Now, if you don't want to do talking uh, by writing it down, you know, it sounds crazy. You talk to yourself, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you're hearing everything and it's registering. And here's another thing. A human being, uh, from what we know, cannot hold two thoughts at the same time. Right. They can't hold two thoughts. It's either right. one or the other. However, like you said, in about three to five seconds, it can switch again. You know, exactly. it's like the weather, <laughs> you know, could <Yeah>. be <laughs> sunny and then and then start to rain. But you can learn through practice control you can control it you know just, mm -hmm. and, and it, it it only takes like two to five seconds to cause the shift once you're mindfully aware right right mm -hmm. that's true and i was thinking too about the self-talk gosh that's so important one of my pet lines is we say things to ourselves we'd never say to a friend right. and, and and i'll tell people in talks that i used to call myself a word that i don't even say anymore i can't even say it i'll spell it and the word was l-o-s-e-r and I thought, what's up with that? If you're not advocating yeah. for yourself, who's going to advocate, advocate for you, David? It's just yeah. so important. In fact, back to the not suppressing the, the feelings and letting them out. And again, there's always that occasional person that they're always smiling. They're always happy. And, and that's why I think sometimes it's shocking to us when we have these, uh, just because they're well-known, the celebrity suicides. And you see yeah. a Robin Williams or a Kate Spade or an Anthony Bourdain, all these people that for all intents and purposes are extremely successful, rich, whatever they are. And then they take their own life. And then you wonder, is that the Kathy's clown laughing on the outside, crying on the inside? And, and I think so yes. much of it to me, I try to get back to, you're going to focus on what you have versus what you don't have. And you can see the glass half full, half empty, up, down, left, right, grateful, ungrateful, whichever. It's a choice that we get to make every day when we get out of bed. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think I'm, one of my pet sayings is gratitude turns what we have into enough. 
And we mm-hmm. seem to be consciously or subconsciously comparing ourselves to other people. And, and it's just so interesting. It's like I went to this RV trip I mentioned just briefly a couple of weeks ago on uh, two weeks from Orlando to Boston. And my younger son and I, Connor, went on and we went to the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. And I'd heard about it before. And after going through spending three and a half hours there, I said to Connor, I just don't really see a way I'm going to complain about anything from here on out. I mean, yep. it, it was just like just shocking. And then we went through another thing in Philadelphia called the Eastern State Prison, which was equally shocking and things. But it was just we were so grateful for what we had. But I just think one of the things I like to do in my talks, and I mentioned the red paper thing, but is the little exercises that they're really kind of experiential and the people can take their card home or their piece of paper. They can shred those red papers. But something I started doing a while ago that's been really helpful is, and I just did a talk on Friday and then I'm going to see him in a month. And I said, you got the homework to do it. I call it writing down your most memorable events of your life, whatever is the most memorable. And I give people a week or a month or whatever it might be. And then the idea is to write down the most memorable, you know, prioritize from the top to the bottom. And then you can do one of three things. You can do top 25, top 50 or top 100, whichever, how many of you had. And I did that because one day I was lamenting the fact I've never been to Italy. I've never been to France. And I started going down the wrong road and going, what is, you're the gratitude guy. What are you talking about these things you haven't done? And so then I wrote the list and I put it on a, the, the, the gratitude tip is to put it on an Excel spreadsheet or a Word doc so you can prioritize it, print it up, put it on your desktop, put it on your bulletin board, put it on the refrigerator, wherever you're going to see it. And I'm telling you, if you're having a tough day, you go look at that thing, that list of things you've done that are the most memorable, it'll change your attitude. So it's just so important. And that's, that's one of the things I love about Pacific Institute. So much of what is about the attitude. Yeah. And you know, um, here's another interesting thing. Behavior is at the subconscious level. You know, I, um, I, I used to say uh, uh, when I was presenting live, I talk about you know the uh, what they call the autonomic systems we have in our body. Like, you know, gratefully we don't have to think, of, make sure our heart beats. You know, right, uh, right, it does it. You know, our our pancreas works, and um, you know, every everything just does it automatically. Well, I tell them, unfortunately, I, I, I our creator stuck behavior in there too, because most of the time we don't we don't think about how we're acting, behaving, behaving, or what we're thinking about. We don't do it Mm -hmm. until you bring it from the subconscious to the conscious level. And when you do that, that's, and and that's when you start writing it down, the solution, not the problem, but you have to recognize the problem first, you know, and give it a label. You know, this makes me sad. This makes me angry. Mm -hmm. This makes me anxious, you know, Um, and, and, and then writing down, the opposite of it, you know, in other words, what makes me feel happy? What makes me feel uh, uh, less anxious or just fun? Um, and, and and you start moving it that way. Now, what you're doing when you write it down like that is you're putting it at the conscious level. And then if you repeat it, okay, now, one last thing is some research says that to change a habit, an attitude, a belief or expectation, okay, it takes a minimum of three weeks to three months, right, and sometimes longer, depending how badly you want it and other circumstances. But you have to do it. You have to do it every day until it becomes habit. Right. The first week when you start something, I always call it the honeymoon stage. You know, well, right. I started this. The second week, it starts slowing down. So you're going to get up and and walk every day. You know, I'm impressed, David. You do ten miles. I only do oh, three, <laughs> <You know? laughs> thank but, you. but you get up some days and it's raining out or it's cold out or it's like, Oh, geez, I don't know. Right. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, but, but if you can get past that three week to three month period, if you don't go, you feel miserable all day. Right. right. You know, exactly. So you, there has to be that click and it seems like it happens during, you know, that time frame. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just thinking, uh, I'm going to wrap up in about five minutes. So I was thinking of all these notes I've taken of things we're talking about. What's kind of a, I, I like the term um, recipe or daily checklist or diagnosis. And then as you just said too, it's, it's recognize the solutions, uh, behavior is part of our subconscious level. What, what's Dr. Joe say for somebody that says, okay, Dr. Joe, I, I understand this and the psychology and the physiology and all this of the brain. 
what's like a, a five to 10 step daily checklist I could do to combat a lot of these negative things coming at me? What would you suggest? Yeah, I, I think the first thing is, um, you know, first of all, I believe you have to get a routine rhythm going, you know, mm. with something. And that's where that that three weeks, the three months, and sometimes longer period comes. You have to just do it. And and um, uh, <laughs> another thing is, while I'm thinking about it, they say that you have five, the subconscious is really uh, what's telling you stay in bed, it's cold out. Right. But there, there's what's called the five second rule. Uh, if you just don't think, just get up and go, okay? Right. Uh, your brain doesn't have a chance <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to really consciously think about it and you're already in action and doing it. So, so, so you got like, you know, just do it is really something um, mm. that works. And, and, um, and, and so I, I think a, a checklist might, might be uh, to, to um, you know, you have to get a, get first decide what you want or first decide mm -hmm. Uh, your gratitude, what, what you're happy for. Okay. And, and then, um, you know, write things down. Like I thought I mentioned before, get them off your chest, make the decision, all that. But, but I think um, a big one is uh, changing your, um, your attitude. Now that's not an easy uh, thing because however old you are, uh, that's something that was ingrained, you know, um, it, it, people, uh, this is another shocking fact. Maybe you've heard, I'm sure you have, um, that, um, 85% of a person's habits, attitudes, beliefs, expectations, personality are developed between the ages of three and five. Yeah. Isn't that something? Wow. And go all, and go all the way up to age 11, which is called the first 4,000 days. Now yeah. it continues, but it gets deep seated, especially from, from uh, two or three to five or six somewhere in that ballpark. So that's, that's the battle. I mean, if we came from, uh, you know, um, a family that this was taught to us as second nature, but they're saying that only about 3% of the population actually um, came from what we call the lucky gene club. Okay? Yeah. And it's really not genetic. It's more environmental anyway. But I think a combination of you know, with, with what you teach and do, uh, daily journal, daily looking at what you're grateful for. When you run into a roadblock, stop for a minute. You know, and and, and you've got you've got uh, that five second, five seconds to change things around. I like that. You know, and and but you have to do it until it come it becomes second nature. And visualize, you know, what would be the ideal. You know what. What, what is your life? What's ideal for your life in the next three to five years? Um, and, and all these little techniques, you know, are like we said earlier, are really simple, but so profound. And yeah. I think, I think what happens is people just, they don't think to do it, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's really good. And I like that. And I really, one of the words, I just kind of put this in order of what you just said, because I like kind of, again, the recipe or the, the plan, game plan, whatever for the everyday daily checklist. And I love the word decide. And there's just yes. something. And, and when we talked about self-talk and we could do a whole podcast just on self-talk, but yeah. I remember it was, it was August 25th of last year and I was sitting watching TV and I just was by myself and I thought, so I have a question for you. Speaking of self-talk, you always want to be 225. Is that the weight you want to be? Wouldn't it be cool if you could get down to your high school weight? And well, that's not possible. Well, it says who? And then I started the plan and it took me about six months, but I ended up losing about 40 pounds. And the big part of it was the 10 miles, but, but I really like this. And, it, and, and one of it is that decide. And I know there's all sorts of, as you said, Joe, there's all sorts of people. It's two weeks, it's three weeks, it's a month, it's four months. There's all those kinds of things. I sometimes contend, I've done a couple of things where I just snap my fingers and change right then said, I'm not doing it anymore. You're going to go yeah. left instead of right. And just and look in the mirror and, and get a good relationship with that person. So just kind of to recap, I put down, decide what you want, which is very important. You know, what's, what's your kind of end result or goal. 
uh, get a routine or a rhythm. I think that's really neat and a routine. And so you kind of follow it. And then I love the five second rule. That's so great. You don't even give your, don't even give your mind a chance because it's mm -hmm. always the minds. Oh, come on, let's rest for another 10 minutes and so on. That's right. So uh, yeah. the writing things down, we covered a couple of times, so important pen to paper. And they even say that this, I got a MacBook pro here and this keyboard, that's not bad, but there's nothing quite like this. And we talk yeah. about see it, touch it, feel it and so forth. Uh, decide to change your attitude. That's something that um, I unfortunately had a very negative father. I'm a very positive guy. And he was one of those. I'd say, uh, good morning, dad. You go, what's good about it? And I just, yeah. I didn't understand that. Or I saw it's, oh, it happens to be beautiful in Seattle today. And I'd say it's beautiful. It's, it's going to rain tomorrow. And I just yeah. thought, man, and so you decide, nobody gets in and changes your wiring and tells you what your attitude is. And then the daily gratitude journal or the journaling is so important, getting it down on paper and then kind of what is ideal for you. So that's a pretty good formula. So, yeah. well, listen, we got to wrap up. Thank you, Joe, so much. I just got a bunch of nuggets down here. I will put in the show notes of the uh, ways to connect with you too, for those that might be interested. I was actually, I'm going to put a few of these things in here, maybe even this little, uh, this little formula here too. So uh, some great, great takeaways, but so uh, to wrap up, my podcast is available every Tuesday morning at 5 a.m. on the Transformation Talk Radio Network and is available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and so forth. Please subscribe and give me a five-star rating if you like what you hear, which I appreciate. To purchase a gratitude journal or to find out more about my gratitude speaking and coaching, you can connect with me at thatgratitudeguy.com. And also, if you'd like to receive my Monday morning minute, it's very easy to do this. Go to your text and in the text number, put in 22828. That's 22828. And in the message box, type in gratitude guy. It'll send you a link and you can get hooked up on that. So lastly, thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, I'm David George Brook, that gratitude guy. And remember, be grateful and never quit. Thanks, Joe. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you for listening to That Gratitude Guy podcast with David George Brook, where living with gratitude turns what you have into enough. Transformation starts now and you have everything you need to achieve great things. In a world that is constantly changing, there is motivation and inspiration right in front of us. And you can find yours right now. Don't wait. Visit thatgratitudeguy.com to get started living with gratitude today.